In this video, I'll talk about how I uh, set up my uh, telescope and uh, mount system here for shooting at effectively a thousand millimeters. And I can basically always shoot uh, five minute exposures that are very clean with uh, no trailing at all and a perfect focus and all the things that you would want with a deep sky image. So we're starting out here with the mount. So this is the uh, ZWO AM5 mount. It's a uh, harmonic uh, drive mount, which means it doesn't uh, need any counterweights because the, uh, the gears inside of it are able to handle a lot of weight without, uh, without proper balance. So I use this without uh, any counterweight, just putting my telescope and all my gear onto it. Uh, you can also notice with this uh, scope that I have, uh, and, and throughout my setup, you'll see that I have nothing dedicated for polar alignment here. So I'm uh, using uh, plate solving to do the polar alignment. And uh, that just means that I take it, the, the scope can uh, take images in one part of the sky and then rotate, take images in another part of the sky and do some mathematical calculations to see how far off it, it it the actual alignment is from where it thinks it should be. So uh, basically this is one way to uh, polar align without actually uh, like seeing the, even seeing the North Star. So uh, we'll get started by talking a little bit about uh, the uh, telescope. So I have a William Optics uh, 73 millimeter scope here. It's a, a double A power refractor for people who are, might be interested. And so uh, this uh, scope has a, a, a focal length of four, around 430 uh, uh, millimeters and an aperture of f5.9. So as it's a uh, double A uh, refractor, right, the uh, edges might not be perfectly uh, in focus and stuff. So we need also a field flattener. So let's uh, attach this here. And so we just tighten down uh, the bolts here. And then if we take off this uh, back uh, guard here, we can uh, attach a fuel flattener. So a fuel flattener looks like uh, this. So basically uh, what this does is it corrects the optical uh, distortion around the uh, edges of the photo and gives you, with an o gives you an overall cleaner result. So one effect of using a field flattener is that you have to uh, correct uh, for the, uh, the back focus, which means that the glass in the field flattener has to be a specific distance from the uh, camera sensor. So this is called a uh, back focus. And so you need something called, called a spacers. So a spacer is literally nothing but uh, an adapter that literally adds space between the uh, field flattener and the uh, camera. So for my setup here, I have these uh, two field flatteners. I believe one is like uh, 16 and a half millimeters and the other one is 21 something like that, and they just uh, screw on the uh, back of the uh, field flattener here. So now that we have the scope and the field flattener, we're ready to uh, attach a camera. So we have a, a few different options here. So one, we can try to connect a, a standard uh, SLR mirrorless camera. So I have a Sony one here. In order to do that, we need this adapter called a uh, tiering adapter. And so this one is uh, specific for the uh, Sony E-mount system, but they make these for the Canon, uh, EF, uh, RF, and then all the Nikon Z mounts and all these other all the other ones that are available. You can buy the adapter proper for your uh, a camera system. One thing to keep in mind is when you're trying to get proper back focus, each uh, camera system probably has a different depth between the. Uh, actual uh, camera sensor in the front of the uh, camera. So when you attach your adapter, you might have to do some slightly different uh, spacing for the connection. So it basically what you do is you uh, just screw in, this is actually really straightforward, just like any standard camera, you would uh, attach the adapter and then you would screw it onto here. So I'm not gonna screw it onto here because I uh, generally, 
use my uh, dedicated astrophotography camera here. So this is the uh, uh, ASI 183MC Pro here. So it's a, a dedicated camera. It has uh, uh, basically a, a freezer in here or whatever you want to call it to cool down the sensor to a negative uh, 20 degrees so you get less noise in it. You can see the sensor here is really small. Um, I don't know the exact dimensions on it. It's about 20 megapixels and uh, the crop factor by my math was around 2.7 uh, compared to a full frame uh, sensor. So if you take this uh, telescope here, that's around 400 to 430 uh, millimeter in focal length and you multiply it times the 2.7, you get about a thousand a millimeter of, of uh, effective focal length when you're shooting with uh, this camera and uh, this uh, telescope setup. So you can see here we have a uh, the main camera, here, our main scope here, right, which is this William Optic scope, and we also have the main camera here, and we have the mount. So now we have to uh, think about uh, like when we are tracking with our mount we want to be able to do corrections and we call this uh, uh, guiding. So in order to do guiding with uh, a telescope, there are several options, but the one that I'm using here is uh, adding a, another uh, small scope and another guide camera to the setup. So I have this uh, mini scope here and uh, this, I believe, I don't know, uh, I don't remember the exact size on this one, uh, but it's just a small scope. And then this comes with a small guide camera and you uh, I just uh, connect them here like so. And you end up with something that looks like this. And in order to use it, I basically just uh, slide this on uh, top of my uh, main scope here. And so it's aligned with uh, with the main telescope and it seems has a similar field of view. So basically what it does is it continuously takes the images for the guiding and uh, like it set, determines if the scene has moved at all, right? And if the stars that it's using have moved, it will correct the mount, tell the mount to move slightly differently so that the field of view remains the same. So now how would we uh, run this entire setup? So there are uh, several ways to do this. You can just connect a laptop or basically any other computer to this, but like that's kind of uh, large and maybe inconvenient and maybe not so portable. So I actually have something called the uh, uh, ASI Air. It's made by a company, ZWO. You'll see it common here with all the theme, with all this red, we have the AM5, the guide scope, guide camera and the main camera. They're all made in this ASI are all made by uh, this company called ZWO. They're a Chinese uh, uh, manufacturer of all sorts of astrophotography related gear. So this little computer can uh, control everything. It can connect to the camera and it control the exposure. It can connect to the guide camera and control exposures there. It can send the corrections to the, uh, the M5 here, right? To correct the mount. And basically, it can also power everything. So we'll connect it right over here and tighten that down. And so one other component that I'd like to quickly mention that could be important depending on your location here that I, I use sometimes is called the uh, dew heater. So the dew heater just goes around your uh, scope and prevents uh, dew from forming on uh, the uh, optics, which could uh, really mess up your images. So optimally, right, if you're having uh, one of these on your main camera, you probably could have one on your guide camera as well, uh, except the, the uh, exact uh, focus and, uh, and details there are probably not as important, but it could still be necessary in certain conditions. So let's take a minute now and uh, see how we would wire this whole thing up just so you can uh, get an idea uh, how, how it works, where, how the power supply works and how uh, the cameras and uh, mount and everything connect to the uh, computer. So let's, uh, let's start with uh, power since that's the most uh, simple thing maybe. 
So, like I was saying, the uh, ASI Air here, this computer, it has the ability to power everything. So it has uh, four different uh, output ports here. They all are 12 volt outputs. And the uh, input is also 12 volts. So if I connect one uh, uh, cable here, and then I connect another one to my uh, mount over here, right this way, I can uh, power the mount. So you can see this cable goes here. So obviously I'm not gonna think of how much about cable management, right? If I was going to be running this right afterwards, I would think about where the cables are going and other stuff. Right now I'm just doing this for uh, demonstration purposes to see, so you can see how this thing all connects. So we can also connect a second power uh, output here and then connect this to the uh, main camera. And so uh, in this uh, particular setup, those are the only uh, two things that need to be uh, pow need power directly into them. The uh, guide camera just is powered through a uh, USB and uh, obviously the scopes don't need power. So, and then I guess we can consider power for uh, the dew heater. The dew heater can just uh, plug into, uh, into the mount uh, to the computer here and get power from that as well. All right, so let's talk about uh, connecting uh, the cameras and the mount from a data perspective. Oh yeah, one thing about more about power. Let's actually connect input power. So on the other side of my uh, ASI Air here, right, you can uh, plug the main power input in. All right, this is, I believe, 12 volt, five amp power, and it just plugs into the side over here. I would rotate the whole setup, but I'm worried the cables might get tangled. And then obviously for power, you can uh, plug this into any wall power, or I have one of these uh, Jackery batteries, but there's really no reason why you couldn't use any portable battery as long as it has enough output. So next we'll, we'll talk about wiring. So Wiring the actual data cables between this is actually not that complicated. So basically we have uh, this wire right here. This is a, uh, a USB, uh, I think USB three cable because it's blue. And so we can connect one end into this, uh, the ASI air, and then the other end connects to the main camera here. And so that's how the, uh, uh, computer here, the S Air would control the uh, main camera. And then we have a, uh, another cable here for the uh, guide camera. Very similarly, we connect uh, to the guide camera and then into the computer here. And then uh, the last uh, data cable connection that we have is to the mount. And so once again, it's another USB cable and uh, you uh, connect it to the ASI air here and then it connects to the uh, mount over here, except I think I have to flip the cable over like that. All right, so basically this is the, the a full working uh, setup. Obviously the cables would be very tangled if I tried to really run anything like super serious here. If it ran overnight, something would get caught and there would be a problem. Uh, but yeah, like actually, let's uh, turn it on and actually see it work. I think we should be able to just power it on here. And let's make sure we got power. Yep, we got power. So it'll take a, a sec to turn on here. And then once it's turned on, we have actually a few uh, d different options for like moving the uh, scope around. So while it's turning on, I can talk about one of them. So this is like a hand called a hand controller. So basically this just runs into your uh, mount directly and allows you to control it. It bypasses the whole ASI Air computer here and uh, it would like basically give you very limited uh, controls. You can see there's like 
uh, some kind of uh, knob here with two buttons. So really the, the amount of control is limited, but we can uh, just for demonstration purposes show that this is working. Get this facing the right direction. There we go. So now that it's turned on, we should be able to move the scope. You can see that it uh, can move on either of the axis of rotation and it can move in either direction. So I basically have a full control of the uh, mouth with this. The other option is to run it with uh, the uh, phone app. And so uh, uh, the ASI Air app here on my phone, if I open that, it will come up with a uh, menu system. So uh, you put in all the details of your setup and then you uh, enter the device and then uh, you again have the ability to, very similar to the hand controller, manually move your setup around. And so this is uh, uh, not the main functionality that one would normally use. This might be useful. I used this, for example, when I was uh, shooting the uh, solar eclipse a few weeks ago. But like uh, normally you would use the uh, ability of the mount to have a uh, go-to function, right? And this go-to function would, uh, you would say, I want to take a picture of like uh, Saturn and then you would say uh, find Saturn in the sky and after you have polar aligned then uh, you just hit go to Saturn and it will go to Saturn. So yeah that's basically uh, how uh, this works. Uh, maybe I'll create uh, another uh, video on uh, exactly how the this uh, app works and how you can use it for polar aligning and other things. Maybe once I get a clear night and I have time to do that. But thanks for watching.